Australia is a continent unlike any other, home to scores of lethal creatures found nowhere else in the world. Some are faceless, others unforgettable, but all use ingenious methods to hunt, defend, and kill. Sometimes when we enter their worlds, we get too close, with fatal results. Prepare to come face to face with Australia's deadly dozen. Two hundred million years ago, the Earth's continents were all joined together in a landmass called Pangaea. But when this supercontinent split apart, it spun a large piece into isolation. And over the course of millions of years, this island formed a variety of ecosystems. Outback, rainforest, and coastal waterways. Today, Australia is home to more than 35,000 kilometers of coastline. And living within these waters are some of the world's most lethal and deceptive predators. One of them is a creature we don't often think of as deadly. The beachcomber wanders across the sand, searching for shells. But this shell has a resident, and it doesn't want to be disturbed. It strikes in an instant, stunning its captor with a rush of agonizing pain. It's the cone snail, and it's armed with a secret weapon, venom. There are over 500 species of cone snail across the tropical and subtropical waters of the Indo-Pacific region. But Australia is home to the most toxic species, Conus geographus. It's found from Brisbane, north to Darwin, and west to Exmouth. Cone snails, also known as cone shells, get their name from their multicolored funnel-shaped homes. They hide in shallow waters during the day. But at night, they hunt, using their venom-filled harpoons to stab and neutralize their prey. The cone snail injects venom that consists of 200 different compounds, making it one of the most complex venomous creatures on Earth. It injects this elixir through a one centimeter long harpoon, which it fires through its proboscis or tongue. The toxins quickly paralyze and digest the fish, while the snail's mouth expands and engulfs it. The mouth can consume prey almost as large as the predator itself. One harpoon, one kill. But at any given time, the snail's mouth contains nearly 20 harpoons in various stages of development. This creature is always armed. It's an efficient system for killing and protection, designed to compensate for the snail's inability to move quickly. Shell collectors should beware, because there's no safe way to handle a cone snail. The proboscis can reach any point on the snail's body and deliver enough venom to kill 15 people.
its sting is excruciatingly painful. The pain fades, but numbness soon sets in, followed by dizziness, slurred speech, and paralysis. And there's no anti-venom for cone snail stings. Pressure, immobilization, and artificial respiration are the only known treatments. And although it's rare, death can occur. But the cone snail isn't the only camouflage predator in these waters. What looks just like a stone is in fact a stone fish, the most venomous stinging fish in the world. There are 30 recorded stonefish stings every year in Australia. Most are accidents rather than deliberate attacks. The stonefish lives just steps from the shore along nearly two-thirds of Australia's coast, from Brisbane to Geraldton. Aboriginals call it nohu, or the waiting one. The encrusted predator can sit motionless for hours beneath the sand waiting for small fish and shrimp to pass by. Then it springs to life, creating a powerful vacuum with its mouth and sucking down the prey in a matter of milliseconds. But the stonefish isn't just a predator, it's also prey. And while it may appear defenseless to larger sharks and rays, it's armed with quite a surprise. When agitated, the stonefish raises 13 spines along its back to signal that any attack will come at a price. Each spike tapers to a razor-sharp point, much like a sword blade, and is sharp enough to penetrate rubber shoes or flippers. Spikes also contain an additional defense, venom. The muscle and neurotoxins cause immediate pain, swelling, high fever, vomiting, and paralysis. Hot water can lessen the pain, but victims should seek immediate medical attention. Anti-venom is recommended in most cases. Left untreated, Stonefish stings can cause respiratory failure or heart trouble. And there's another cloaked creature that swims among Australia's swells. Only this one can sting without being seen. An alien-like life force bobs on the surface. It's faceless, limbless and toxic. When its tentacles unknowingly brush against a swimmer, it launches her into extreme pain. It's the box jellyfish. There are nearly 30,000 species of jellyfish worldwide. And the box jellyfish is the most toxic of them all. It's armed with venom that attacks a human's nervous and cardiac systems like no other creature on the planet. Ranging in Australia from Brisbane, north to Darwin, and west to Exmouth, the box jellyfish gets its name from its transparent box-shaped body. These boxes, or bells, can grow to the size of a bucket and train as many as 60 tentacles. Fully grown, the jellyfish can reach four and a half meters long. Every centimeter of every tentacle contains millions of stingers, all ripe with venom. These stingers, known as nematocysts, act like mini hypodermic needles, each injecting a micro drop of venom directly into the victim.
food brings the box jellyfish close to shore and close to humans. Its long tentacles contain so many stingers that swimmers don't need to see the creature to be stung by it. One encounter can result in a toxic punch to the entire body. Skin around the bite area dies within hours, leaving long purple rope-like whip marks. As the venom is absorbed, breathing quickly becomes distressed. Heart and respiratory failure soon follow. Even the brain is affected. But an antivenom is available. Of the hundreds of jellyfish stings that occur every year in Australia, few are fatal. The jellyfish reserves its real power for small fish and shrimp. It envelops its catch in its tentacles, paralyzing it almost immediately then draws it into its bell to be digested. A death to be seen by all. Australia's waters teem with some of the world's most deceptively lethal creatures. But they're also home to a collection of animals that are more obvious. Animals that warn and attack with ornate and fierce displays. It sits perfectly camouflaged among the rocks until it's discovered. Then it flashes its brilliant warning and releases its toxic bite. This is the blue-ringed octopus. There are at least five different species of this octopus, all living in the tidal rock pools along Australia's southern coast. The blue-ringed octopus spends its days hiding in crevices or under rocks. People rarely come in contact with them. There have been just three fatalities in the last century. But at night, the tiny mollusk hunts. It subdues small fish and crabs with its paralyzing venom, either injecting directly into the prey itself or into the water around it. Once frozen, the blue-ringed octopus chops up the victim with its powerful beak and begins to feast. When resting, the octopus is yellow with dark brown rings. But when provoked, the rings burst into bright peacock blue. This change in color stems from a collection of elastic ink-filled sacs known as chromatophores. Located directly under the skin, the sacs stretch when the octopus is threatened, releasing the blue pigment to the surface. When the threat passes, the sacs shrink and the pigment disappears. Most bites to humans occur when they try to handle the octopus. By the time the creature changes color, it's too late. The blue-ringed octopus's parrot-like beak can easily puncture the skin and the muscle beneath. The bite itself is relatively painless, but the venom is 10,000 times more toxic than cyanide and fast-acting. It attacks and freezes the victim's muscles, triggering the immediate loss of taste, touch and sight. Left untreated, paralysis and respiratory failure can follow. Just one bite can kill an adult in 90 minutes, all from a creature the size of a golf ball. There's no known antidote, but heart massage and artificial respiration can move the toxins through the body and prevent long-term damage. Another arresting predator also combs Australia's waters. But this one...
kills with force. The saltwater crocodile, the largest croc in the world. Salties inhabit parts of Southeast Asia and the Pacific. The key to their wide range is their mobility. They can swim for a thousand kilometers. In Australia, they're found along the northern coast, from Broome and east to Cairns, where it's estimated they number as many as 150,000. They primarily inhabit brackish water around coastal areas. But they're also found in freshwater rivers, billabongs, and swamps. Descending from the age of dinosaurs, salties are fearsome predators. Their jaws pack a biting power of one and a half million kilograms of force per square meter, while their bodies reach weights of 270 kilograms and lengths of over six meters. They are the largest reptiles on the planet. And when it comes to killing, they're efficient predators. Equipped with eyes and nostrils on the tops of their heads, they can hear, see, and smell their prey, while the rest of their bodies remain hidden. But with just one flick of their muscular tails, they can propel themselves out of the water and on top of their quarry. Using their jaws, they crush or decapitate the victim. With larger prey, they clamp their jaws and turn the victim in a death roll, which kills through massive trauma and drowning. Fish, birds, snakes and smaller crocodiles are standard fare. But sorties can take down prey as large as cows and kangaroos. Sorties consume their entire victims, bones, skin, hair, hooves, and will attack and eat any animal given the opportunity. But despite their predatory power, sorties, on average, kill less than one person a year in Australia. Living in Australia's waters, this pair of animals warn their victims before they attack, with some incredibly complex visual displays. And their warnings are best heeded, whether prey or passerby. Australia is also home to 22 species of venomous spider. Spiders that, while searching for prey or shelter, sometimes creep and crawl into human habitats. Sitting in the dim shadows of the shed, a female spider watches intently as her dinner scurries by. Suddenly, a hand invades her webbed domicile. The venomous red-back spider strikes, and the misery begins. The red-back is a member of the widow family, and like her North American cousin, the black widow, has a telltale hourglass symbol on her belly. But this Australian arachnid gets her name from the trademark red stripe across her back. All this lethal power is in the body the size of a pea. To seize her much larger prey, she employs a complex web, building her lair in an area sheltered away from sunlight and spinning a collection of vertical threads from her living chamber down to the exposed ground. 
Each catch line is adorned with drops of sticky silk that can snare unsuspecting prey. Insects, small lizards, and even juvenile snakes and mice are then quickly detained and enveloped in bands of sticky silk. Once trapped, the prey receives an injection of neurotoxic venom. The venom tenderizes and dissolves the insect tissue, converting it into a kind of soup. The spider then jabs her straw-like fangs into her meal and sucks it dry. She defends with her venom as well, usually when her web is disturbed. Bites are immediately painful. After an hour, the pain at the site begins to fade. But as the neurotoxic venom spreads, it blocks the nerve impulses, causing severe pain, sweating, muscular weakness, nausea, and vomiting. The redback lives throughout the continent, both indoors and out, so human encounters are common. There are nearly 600 bites every year, and almost half require anti-venom. Fatalities are rare. Children and the elderly, with their underdeveloped and compromised immune systems, are most at risk. There is much to admire about the spider with the red back, but it should be done from a distance. A much larger and more frightening spider also sometimes wanders into our homes. Its strike is so deep that it must be torn from the limb. But by then, it's too late. This woman has been bitten by the Sydney funnel-web spider, perhaps the most dangerous spider in the world. Without medical intervention, she could die within the hour. Male funnel-web bites deliver powerful venom known as atraxotoxin. The toxins reach the circulatory system in approximately two minutes and can kill in 15. Symptoms include mouth tingling, twitching tongue, profuse salivating, watery eyes, sweating, and muscle spasms. After two hours, most of the symptoms subside, only to be replaced with respiratory distress and cardiac arrest. Sydney funnel webs are easy to spot. They're large spiders with glossy black heads and dark brown bodies and they're best known for their massive fangs. Most spiders' fangs are pincer-like, but the funnel webs are hardened and act like daggers. To work these daggers, they must raise their bodies up and strike down. And they strike repeatedly, with enough force to penetrate a human toenail. There are 36 species of funnel web spider in Australia. The Sydney funnel web resides mostly around the city of Sydney, north to Newcastle and south to the Irrawarra region. Funnel webs get their names from their distinctive cone shaped burrows. They construct these silk lined retreats within moist, cool shelters under rocks or logs or within earthen crevices. Funnel webs spend most of their lives in their burrows. But during summer and autumn, males leave their refuges in search of mates. And 
they often wander into houses and garages. That's when humans encounter them. Since its introduction in the 1980s, Funnelweb antivenom has been administered over a hundred times, with no bite-related fatalities. They're tiny, beautiful, and dangerous, and they're among the deadly dozen. Over the millennia, Australia's isolation has led to the extraordinary evolution of many of its venomous creatures, including snakes. Today, there are nearly 50 species of venomous snake living on the island. Some of these are among the most toxic in the world. And sometimes humans find themselves in the snake's realm with tragic results. spots a newly formed puddle and heads for a drink. One wrong step is all it takes. The tiger snake has left its mark. Australia is home to two species of tiger snake. It gets its name from its skin usually a collection of yellow and orange bands. Not all tiger snakes are easily identified. Some are entirely black. But they all have a fierce tiger-like disposition. They're found throughout southeastern Australia, from Brisbane to the Eyre Peninsula, parts of Western Australia, and across the island of Tasmania. Tiger snakes are highly adaptable serpents that live in a variety of habitats, dry, rocky ground, woodlands, and swamps. Their prey varies as well, frogs, rodents, and a particular delicacy, mutton bird chicks. This meal is blocked by the mother, a formidable opponent capable of killing the tiger. than risk injury, the serpent kills her first, clearing the way for a feast. Development has reduced and fragmented much of the tiger's natural habitat, so they're also found in suburban areas, particularly ones close to fresh water. And that's where they frequently encounter humans. When threatened, tigers spread their necks to appear larger. If the threat remains, they strike. Tiger venom is a complex cocktail of neurotoxins and anticoagulants. The neurotoxins attack the nervous system, paralyzing the muscles and causing asphyxiation while the anticoagulants break down the molecular structure of the victim's blood, causing heavy and uncontrollable bleeding. Antivenom has kept the fatality rate to almost zero. But the medicine must be administered before paralysis sets in. If not, it can be difficult to reverse. While the tiger's appearance often ensures it is seen, this lethal serpent goes to great lengths to remain hidden. The Death Adder. Its toxic strike can kill a fully grown human in six hours. Its neurotoxic venom immediately attacks the body, triggering nausea and the inability to speak. 
as the venom works its way through the bloodstream, breathing difficulties and paralysis soon follow. Left untreated, respiratory failure is all but assured. Before the creation of anti-venom, 50% of death adder bites were fatal. Today, death is rare, but this snake is still dangerous. Found throughout nearly all of Australia, the death adder is recognized by its triangular head and short, fat body. It's an ambush hunter, lying half buried and motionless for days, even weeks, waiting for prey, and using its brightly colored tail as a lure. When birds or lizards approach, the tail twitches, resembling a grub or a small worm. It draws the prey closer until... The death adder strike is the fastest in Australia. Just a quarter of a second. Its fangs rotate outward, ensuring its venom flows directly into its target. While most snakes move away from the first sign of danger, the death adder tends to sit tight and rely on its camouflage, earning it the nickname Death Adder. If an unsuspecting hiker gets too close or steps on the hidden snake, its large fangs and muscular body can inflict serious damage. But the death adder only strikes once. This snake strikes repeatedly. The Taipan is a slender serpent that size, method of attack, and toxic bite affect hundreds of people every year. There are two species of Taipan, the inland and the coastal. The coastal is the more commonly encountered of the pair. It generally lives in areas of northern and eastern Australia. At more than three meters, it's the continent's longest venomous snake. Its name from the Chinese translates literally as Big Boss. The inland has been found most often in sparsely populated areas of southwestern Queensland and South Australia. And while it's not as long as its cousin, it has the most toxic venom of any terrestrial serpent on the planet. Just one milligram a drop about the size of a pinhead can kill a thousand mice. Taipans are largely solitary hunters that do everything in their power to avoid human contact. But they're fond of mice and rats, so they're sometimes found in proximity to humans. And that's when the trouble begins. Unusually fast and nervous, taipans won't hesitate to defend themselves when threatened. Unlike most snakes that bite and run, they raise their long bodies high off the ground and strike repeatedly. Some humans have been bitten as many as eight times in a single attack. The venom's blood clotting agents stop the body's blood flow in a matter of seconds while the neurotoxins immobilize the muscles. Without antivenom, death can occur in six hours. But the Taipan isn't responsible for the most human fatalities in Australia. That distinction goes to the eastern brown snake. Although it primarily resides in the eastern half of the country, this slender-bodied serpent is highly adaptable, living in all types of environment, including the suburbs. It uses its flexible head to squeeze into sheds and barns when searching for rodents. It's this proximity to humans that makes the Eastern Brown responsible for the most snake bite deaths in Australia.
When threatened, the eastern brown coils into a distinctive S for maximum striking force. And it strikes fast, often with its mouth open to compensate for its short fangs. Its venom is a lethal combination of neurotoxins and anticoagulants that kill through massive internal bleeding, as well as heart, lung, and kidney failure. Every year, hundreds of brown snakes are removed from in and around homes and workplaces. This should always be left to the experts. In a country full of venomous creatures, Australia's snakes rank among the most lethal. They're armed with an amazing array of methods to catch and kill prey. Australia is home to some magnificent and deadly predators. But in our minds at least, one species reigns supreme. Its fearsome reputation, hunting strategies, and myriad behaviors make it one of the most formidable creatures, not just in Australia, but in all of nature. I heard a splash behind me. You can see something out the corner of my eye. There was fins and things going everywhere. I'm hanging onto its nose and its bottom jaws chomping at me. It didn't take long, I realized it was a shark. And not just any shark, a great white. Great whites are the largest predatory sharks in Australian waters. They are found in depths of around 900 meters as well as close to the surface in nearshore waters. Great whites can stretch over six meters long and weigh up to 2,200 kilograms. The shark's name comes from its white underbelly, but its torpedo-shaped body, cone-shaped snout, and large dorsal fins are all etched in our minds. It's equipped with a type of sixth sense called the ampullae of Lorenzini. Located on the front of its snout, these electroreceptors detect weak electrical fields given off by prey, like seals, allowing the shark to hone in on its target. The massive predators often approach from below, rocketing to the surface and pulverizing their prey. This technique not only makes the prey easier to see, but the predator harder to escape. Ancestors of the great white shark have roamed the seas for nearly 400 million years. Today, they inhabit temperate oceans around the world, and occasionally the tropics. Great whites aren't bound by territorial ranges. They're one of the few species to travel the entire globe. Females have been tracked journeying from Africa to Australia and back in only nine months, a total of more than 19,000 kilometers. One of the best places to witness great whites is Australia. They thrive in the waters off Kangaroo Island a tiny isle on the south coast. With one third of its land protected by the government, Kangaroo Island is a natural paradise, home to kangaroos, wallabies, and one of Australia's largest colonies of sea lions. And where there are sea lions, there are sharks.
But these waters also attract surfers. In September 2005, Josh Barris was celebrating his 26th birthday, surfing with friends at the island sanctuary. So I'm paddling out the back and it's beautiful, really glassy, really calm water, just with nice swells rolling in. And I thought then, this is just an exceptional day. And then all of a sudden I hear uh, splash and see something out the corner of my eye and my initial thought is what's that seal doing so close but really quickly I realized that's not a seal it was a great white shark and it was coming straight for the surfer it hits me with incredible force and knocks me forwards off my surfboard by then the shark is underneath me both hands both feet scraping along its back Whites tend to attack prey like seals from below, using a vertical approach. But when it comes to surfers, they often employ a horizontal attack, swimming straight at the target until they're roughly a meter away. They then emerge well positioned to inflict maximum damage snouts raised and jaws pushed out of their mouths. Some scientists believe this varied method of attack may prove that whites can differentiate between seals and surfers. And then I was in the water and that's when I thought I'm in real trouble here. Uh, I can see the shark again coming back at me and it, it turned around exceptionally quickly. Most fish are cold-blooded, with body temperatures varying according to the temperature of the environment. But great whites are semi-warm-blooded. Their body temperatures remain at a relatively constant 23 to 26 degrees Celsius, even in cold waters. This allows the sharks to draw from their energy reserves for bursts of speed when pursuing more nimble prey. I couldn't believe how quickly it turned around and came back again and I guess I just instinctively put my hands and feet out to try to fend it off um, as it was chomping at me. I managed to sort of roll off to the side of it and it grabbed my surfboard. That's when it absolutely went crazy. A great white has over a hundred teeth, triangular, serrated and nearly five centimetres long and they work in tandem with the predator's powerful jaws. Once locked onto its prey, the shark throws its head from side to side, shearing and sawing flesh until a mouthful is torn. Great whites can bite with a force of more than 225 kilograms. And the five meter long creature that attacked Josh was ready to bite. Although the shark had the surfboard in its jaws, Josh was still hooked to the board. I was getting dragged out to sea. I did get my leg rope off and I watched it keep eating my surfboard. He turned to look for help and spotted a fellow surfer. But when he turned back round, he faced a chilling sight. The water's just dead calm, my surfboard's floating, and there's no shark. And I was sure I'd have left the surfboard to come back for me again. Great whites are believed to be taste testers, tending to bite unfamiliar objects that catch their eye before deciding if they'll consume them. But they prefer fatty animals rich in energy, not humans. In fact, every year in Australia, great whites claim an average of only one person. Meanwhile, commercial fishing and shark control programs claim scores of these sharks every year. 
And because great whites don't begin breeding until 12 years of age, many of the animals killed are juveniles, triggering a potential population collapse. In response, Australia now protects the great white. That was probably the scariest part when it all sunk in of what had happened. But once we got to the rocks, I was just amazed and ecstatic and you know, just couldn't believe how lucky I was that I'd survived it. Paramedics stabilised Josh and helicoptered him to a nearby hospital. There, a team of surgeons mended his severely injured legs. But with Josh's scars came a newfound respect for one of Australia's deadliest species. We're in their territory. We take a risk when we go surfing, but it hasn't stopped me going back in the water. They're an elite group of 12, embodying all of nature's grandeur and power. They have thrived with a vast array of survival skills and defenses. They are Australia's deadly dozen. <laughs>